This episode of Death Wish, we drive Stomper and a trophy car from Dallas, Texas, all the way to the mythical town of Laser Town in Johnson Valley, California. If things go wrong, all of us are gonna die. I don't know exactly what year it is, but this is an 80s Crown Vic. It's got long travel suspension and it's got a twin turbo LS. It runs 10 and a half second quarter mile. <laughs> Those she gone. Yeah, radiator's gone. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Can we like take a wager on what's gonna break next? No. Ah. Literally nothing no, is gonna go wrong. That's gonna be a catastrophic failure if we hit something. I'm Joshua Maserol, allowing big industries, and my show Death Wish is where expert level fabricators use their skill set to manifest jaw-dropping creations. My crew and I are on a mission, using eye-catching stunts and machines to expose the kindness of strangers in America. We have four people. We're on a mission to get from Dallas to Southern California to a mythical town in the desert called Laser Town. It's like the ultimate man town. Basically anything that's sick and awesome but doesn't make any sense is there. And that's where Stomper needs to live. Forever home in the desert. Because we got four people and two seats, this is how we gotta roll through Dallas. Okay, let's go. Desperately needed an alignment. I haven't been filming, but we've been all over the place trying to find an alignment shop that would help us. And uh, they're all scared of it, <clears throat> all amateur techs. And uh, so Pro Touring Texas shot me a message like, hey, we see you're bouncing around town, and uh, if you need anything, we got the shop for you. And we all just hustled over here, and we're gonna pull it into the shop right now and do a tape measure alignment. Now we're working on it here. Yeah, yeah, look at me work on it over here. Sweet. Thanks for letting me use your shop, man. This yeah, is yeah. big is. help. Absolutely. Shot across the street and walked in uh, Chipotle and saw y'all trucks sitting over there. So I was like, I'll just shoot him a message because they're probably need to do something. Dude, it, yeah. What a disaster trying to find a way to align this thing. So step one, center the relay rod. Center the relay rod. In the frame. Oh, wonderful. What? Ow, hi. <laughs> we gotta find some loose CV bolts. Oh, okay, they're right here. <laughs> I'm tightening right, some of them right now by hand. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's great. So these holes here just pour all the hot engine air in, and it's like having a furnace blasting on your shoulders. So I'm hoping I can take some of this tape and eliminate that issue. One of the cool things we got here is that this truck is exactly the same width front and back. So to get a really quick and easy alignment, um, we can actually just take a thin string and run it all the way around the outside of all the tires at about the same height. And then you can look at the gap on all the tires and then look down the string and actually see if you're close to square. And then you can just take your front and you can tow it in a little bit, square the back out and have an alignment. Uh, one of the other nice things that makes this a little bit easier to just wing like this is the steering control valves that we have, um, they're non-reactive, so they're closed in the center. So like, if you leave it in the center position, you stop touching it. Um, the wheels aren't able to like return to center like they can on a normal car. Um, so really, we're doing this for tire wear more than like handling characteristics like in your steering wheel feel. Pro Touring Texas. Yeah. Pro Touring Texas on YouTube. Yeah. Well, thanks. Can't to, miss it. Yeah. Well, he gave us a professional Pro Touring alignment here and we're gonna get on the road. Thanks again, man. Yeah, Appreciate it. So this is the first like real test drive that we're about to do. We've sort of puddled it around town for 
quarter to half mile at a time. We have to do 44 miles of probably highway speed. At least we got a semi-decent alignment on this. We've got myself and Kaylee and Jeremy and Chris in the back. If things go wrong, all of us are gonna die. With every inch of my being, I do not wanna drive this on the road. But I have all three of my friends here telling me I can do it. I can't believe we just did that for an hour. Honestly, I mean, I can. Backwards was a better way. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked yeah. mistakes. Again. This is excellent. <laughs> we planned better. We could have actually made it comfy. That was like 53 miles. Was it a thousand more to go? More than that. Yeah. This you was, lost 500 somewhere. Yeah, it's 1,500 miles. We got to do that. But we do have a chase car. My good friend Johnny Baker. I had his car shipped out here. Come check this thing out. Okay. So this, I don't know exactly what year it is, but this is an 80s Crown Vic. And it's got long travel suspension. Kibby Tech out in California did a lot of the, the heavy fab work. And it's got a twin turbo LS. It runs 10 and a half second quarter mile. Oh, cool. So it's got all sort of like pre-runner trophy truck front suspension and back suspension. And did you take a look inside it? It's like so luxury in yeah, here. Yeah, it's like super fancy. Yeah, it's like carpet and I everything. Mean, look at that. But it's super, super nice. We brought this thing out as a chase car for that because like we could just get a rental car or something reliable but that's not fun and this is just as likely to break down as that pile of crap so <laughs> and it's rowdy this thing's fast as hell it's gotta be. this is not actually a toolbox this is a snack rack oh there you go yeah he's genius a munchy man so there we go yeah more snacks than we have tools I'm jeremy good. does for sure he's you right. right. You I, I can't be allowed to drive this <laughs> This just screams mayhem. And I fit so well in it. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> um, so how many people are going on this? Uh, at least three. three. Okay, well, he lied. There's no back seat. He said he'd make it comfy for you. Yeah, the <laughs> generator or whatever's in the corner looks wicked comfy. Yeah. I think that's the sound system. <laughs> Good. Great. My friend Jamie is a world-class barrel racer hey. and she's going to teach me how to go barrel racing Here in her private go. arena. Here we go. <laughs> We didn't do that when Johnny got here. Oh, no, and we just never, wait for him to see it on never, the episode. No, of course. <laughs> awesome. What is this? What is this? <laughs> this this was a nice car. I had car. it all clean. <laughs> Holy. I thought maybe I'd go happen? a couple hundred miles before I had to take a shower. I didn't know I was going to do it in dirt in the car. Well, that's your fault for not closing up the fenders. I live in the desert. It never fills up like that. <laughs> well, clearly you don't go hard in the enough. sand. Holy. How was I supposed to know? Dude, we, can, yeah. we can use this for the oil spills. How haven't you gone hard enough to cause that to happen? I don't know. The dirt is different where I live. Is it though? <laughs> 
I mean, it honestly looks like you shoveled this in here. You're joking me. <laughs> no. Clearly, you had a shovel. You've never been barrel racing before. I mean, <laughs> no. And it shows. <laughs> and it shows. That's it. We're fine. It's finally go time. You! Johnny Baker's here. Hello. Tell us about us, our journey. Um, well, they filled my car with dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's, that's all we have. Dirt. So hopefully that can get us somewhere, because we got an empty cooler. We got an empty cooler. Questionable tool Full toolbox. Yeah. Hearts full of optimism. All right, saddle up. Let's go. So I'm so low on gas. Every time I went around a corner, it would die, and then I'd lose steering. Bone dry. How many quarts of trans fluid do you put in this thing? Three. Is it reading on the stick yet? Yeah. Where does it go if it doesn't leak? What? Where does the trans fluid go if it doesn't leak out of the car? How is that possible? But it does 55. Really? Yep. You're not I mean, like, I could go more, but I also know that if I do 65, 70, it's gonna take, it's gonna fall apart. We're never oh, gonna really? make it. But otherwise, okay? Yeah. How's otherwise, the alignment? It's, it's fine. Yeah. Cool. Everything's good. This thing's a little all over yeah, the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little trophy truck, yeah. a little shaky. That is the nap wagon, dude. Wait until you get there. Look at this guy. <laughs> This actually, we can't actually take this. This is way too nice for this trip. I fell asleep, like actually fell asleep at this yeah. time. Oh. Oh. How much dirt we got out? It's oh. still, oh my God. Yeah. Eight and a half gallons and 110 miles. They use 9.8, which, so we both used half a tank. Yeah. Easy. And that was two hours of driving. So we can drive for three hours safely. If yeah, our bodies can handle it. Yeah, two, <laughs> two sounds good. Two is great. <laughs> here, this is one of them ready. This is transmission fluid right here on the ground. Well, the good thing is by the time we get there, it will be changed. And it'll be like a brand new transmission. But it is there and all back there. And yeah. It looks like it's on the back of the bumper too. What's that on the ground there? Oh, that's actually, that's nice icy cold water. That okay. might be from someone with like AC, not us. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's leaking, you know you got it, right? That's that's true. Once it stops leaking, you know you're out. I found these pre-made meals. They're not cooked yet, but they come in tin dishes. And I'm gonna stuff them in the engine bay and cook them while we drive like the Indians used to. Hi. And now the adventure begins. That was a lot. Yeah, hopefully it didn't actually explode the radiator. Oh, yep. She gone. Yeah, radiator's gone. Oh yeah. Sick. Deuces. It exploded. Oh wow. Oh no. Give the camera. the radiator. There's a hole in the floor. Yep. It's very, it's very moist. Very sticky. Very hot. Okay, well, all we gotta do is figure it out immediately. Yep. Uh, there's a hole in it. There we go. Uh, 
Alright. Yeah, what is that for? It's like next to honey. Like remember. 94 Forerunner V6. Oh, good. Alright, sick. I guess we just gotta figure out what tools we're gonna need. We're gonna need new zip ties to hold the coolers in. Uh, just I drag it to Love's. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Get the strap out of the LTD, turn the LTD around and drag it backwards to Love's. Yep. I don't know how easy it's gonna steer when we can't run it. I don't know if my little chicken arms can do it. Yeah, I'm gonna pull out and try to give you yeah. some that way force. Yeah, yeah. And we'll just try to stay as tight to the shoulder as we can going down. Yeah. See if we can get into the truck stop. Right. Cool. Don't f*** this up, Jeremy. I won't. I won't. That was scary. That was really scary. It steered a lot better than I thought it would. There were a couple of times I got away from it. <laughs> I got the radiator yanked out already, and now I'm gonna borrow Johnny's car. We're gonna run 70 miles out of the way to go get a replacement radiator because that's the closest one there is. Come back, put it in, and see if there's how many miles we can put down after that. A lot of miles. It's not gonna be easy. So. Oh, I got my chickens done. Let's see. Yeah. Oh man, it smells good. Please be cooked. Oh my god, it's so perfect! Oh, suddenly I'm starving. This is great. Oh my god, it's perfect. It is actually cooked all the way. That is, you are so funny. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever meal produced off the hood of the LPD. Brand new warranted radiator. I've probably warranted this radiator like. 12 times. I don't know if that's good on me or not, because the reality is I probably should upgrade the radiator if I keep blowing it up. What do you think, Josh? I'm so stoked, this is sick. <laughs> I'm driving a thousand horsepower pre-runner car. Right? Have you figured out why this thing wanders so bad? Yeah, we're also working on an oil leak. Uh-oh. Yeah, nothing bad yet. It's probably just power steering. Oh yeah, this thing's towed way out. Yeah, wicked. We have a quarter inch on the Himes. Interesting. Well, yeah, well, but that's a half inch overall, but I think it's more than a half inch out. Yeah, how did that happen? What are you building, Josh? Radiator zip ties. Take a bottle cap and slice a hole in it. You run a zip tie through it so it can't pull through the radiator. And then you run that through the fan, through the core, and then another zip tie on this end to hold the fan to the radiator. I cut a piece of trash can up as a sort of wind guard. It's supposed to work perfect. I don't know if you can see because it's awfully dark, but that is gonna work perfect. So we now have an air dam in here, zip ties to the cross member, and it scoops probably double to triple the air that it used to. This is 10.30 at night. We spent pretty much all day parked here running around getting parts we have a new radiator in it everything's zip tied back up better than new did a little few tweakings to johnny's car did we ever tighten up the steering box that thing's like super dangerous it just like bounces and it, it's scary so that may be a deadly problem awesome well i guess i gotta go catch up we got a lot of miles to put down gotta be head gaskets yeah yeah like straight air coming out of the radiator right now okay but we made it right to the exit before this and it just started blah, 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 look back fucking blue flame out the exhaust sweet what does blue flame out the exhaust mean nothing good <laughs> oh no yeah nothing good exactly what it means i don't know it means we probably gotta do head gaskets tomorrow and this is where we stay ha ha all right. I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were driving it when it happened, too. Sounds like sh**. <laughs> so Official it's... prognosis. See, this is why... <laughs> <laughs> this is why... Nice jorts, dude. Yeah, well, it's hotter than Africa out here. Got my sandpaper out. Yeah, stacking those heads, baby. <laughs> Thank God these are aluminum. Fucking hell. Thank God these are aluminum.
Next victim. I'm glad you guys are carrying the stoke this morning. I'm having a hard time getting moving. We're just here for you, man. Yeah, I want to go to Roswell, so I want to see some aliens. We can open up a black hole right in front of there. Right in front of Roswell? Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to wake up tomorrow and just realize that this is just a dream. Like, we didn't actually do this. It was just like a nightmare, and we still in two trucks that drive fine. This is wicked cool. Like, I want to be bummed that we've only made it 172 miles. <laughs> but this is the way the untested vehicles work. Like the beginning part of the trip has the most frequent stops. The last half of the trip, the stops get less frequent, but more severe. So this is an easy stop. All we have to do is head gaskets. Right, the only harder thing to do would be a motor or a transmission or <laughs> a front end, rear end. Rear end be the hardest. Oh yeah, because it's a front end. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Yep. These cheap fuel lines are coming apart, so I'm just gonna take them apart, use the fitting, slide regular old high pressure fuel injection hose right over this with a hose clamp. It's like it was running or something. It's a, she's a hefty unit. But. More next time at La Quinta's Raceworks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no! Come on now, meet us on I-20. <laughs> Grass is very sharp down here. Yeah, right. You stop shaking it. I'm trying not oh, to spill. Trying to spill the coolant oil. I'm trying to get the bolts in, buddy. Yeah, well, I lose the last of our water for this, so. All right. Fire oh, that's a. When you um. Um. Yeah, it's more oil than a gallon. Oh, you left that part. See, I should have left it the hole. It would have been fine. All right, slap some in. I definitely got the coolant out. So we got the we got the heads back on. Got the head gaskets in. Everything's torqued down. We think. We believe everything is tight, new fuel lines are in. We're gonna prime the fuel pump, see if we have any leaks, and then we're gonna try to start it and see if we have any other leaks. Does it have oil? Yep. Yes, we've also put oil back in it after we took the oil out. Important step. Turn it on. Looks like it's running pretty decent. Yeah, so far so good. It runs. Tidy a few things up, and then we're gonna get back on the highway and see if we can make it another 172 miles before we're gonna pull the heads off again. To Laser Town. We're gonna have a good time today. I mean, we were doing 65 most of that. I don't think it's like that. Like, it's not in limbo. I don't even think it's hot. Like, I didn't touch the radio here. So we get the laptop plugged in. Do we see anything? 241 and no fans. Hmm. Huh, that's uh, quite warm. 180 degrees intake air temp. <laughs> nice. Holy Sick. Sh All right, so we're driving down the road right now. We're driving various speeds. We're doing about 50 miles an hour, we just slowed down to 40, and we stacked another 10 degrees. We were at 240, we're now up to 250. So now we're trying to cruise at 50 to see if we lose a little bit of temperature. Uh, but if we stack any more heat than this, really, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to pull over, uh, cause that's just too hot. One of the other things we're seeing is because the turbos are kind of bound beside the bedsides, and we don't have the intercooler working, we're seeing between 144 and 160 degrees of intake air temp at between 40 and 50 miles an hour. Um, so that's that's gonna give us trouble. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing 252 now, so we're probably gonna have to pull over here and uh, let it cool off. So it only goes up, it doesn't go down. <laughs> right. Yeah, regardless, um, completely regardless of speed. I, I still kind of think it's an airflow thing. It should idle. It sh yeah. Like it should idle with the fan at full tilt. Like that's not a lot of heat. 
But if it's an airflow thing, we can pull the bed sides off it and then like strap them to the roof and turn it into a coop. Change the airflow Try it. characteristics yeah. entirely. Yeah, no, I'm I'm into that. See if it lowers the IATs, see what see what else it does. See if it does anything. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And then like this. Bro, that's perfect. That's what I'm saying. This is my idea. So I got a line on a trophy truck radiator. Uh um, the whole truck. In, o in Odessa that you can have. Okay, bedsides converted this truck into a coupe. We're gonna see what that does for airflow. We're gonna be so much faster now. Awesome, cool, good luck. I'm sure of it. Yeah. We've got the new aero package on Stomper, and I don't know what's going on in that vehicle up there, but I know the back here, we've been doing 50 miles an hour, and uh, we're still going. Any other time, this would have already been overheated, be on the side of the road. I'll take 50 miles an hour all day long. Like, we just have to keep moving. Even if it's 30 miles an hour, we have to just keep going in that direction. Just keep breaking down further away from where we broke down last time. Progress is progress. Fail forward. Just a little bit of steam. Oh, there we go. Banging along at 244 no matter what we do. Huh. We yeah. might need to pause, let it all cool off, pull the thermostat. Yeah. I mean, I feel like pulling the thermostat's the next logical. Yeah, break. I'm fine with that. I want to be able to touch it without you dying. This. Like, this is really quite easy. It's hotter than the average bear, right, boo boo? Uh, we're gonna attempt to not get burnt and pull the thermostat out, and hopefully, it'll just run at least 10 degrees cooler so we can get somewhere. I shouldn't have to. Ah, I think the water pump, I mean the thermostat was no bueno. <laughs> yep, look at that, look at that. Flo ah. <laughs> it flows good though. <laughs> that was way too stuck. That was not happy. Oh, don't need that. <laughs> that is a dangerous thing. Okay, you gotta get you the want end to of that hose from away. the front yard, dude. Oh man. What if it's connected to something? It's not, I already looked. We've got holy water in this thing now. It's gotta work. It's gotta work. What? All right, truck's all back together. Back on the road. Woo! All right, we are back at it. We're pulling out after we swapped the thermostat. We got 136 degrees of coolant temp and 100 degrees of intake air temp because it's hot out. It doesn't run now. Uh, Are we out of gas? No. We shouldn't be. How was the temperature? Not really better. Not better? Okay. It, we, it's not overheated, but it's 220 and stacking heat into the motor. Just like. Yeah, 220 is fine. I mean, 230 right. is not that fine, but. 250 is bad. <laughs> 250 is bad. <laughs> but like, without a thermostat, should not be at 220. But you're saying it just shut off right now? Yeah, oh yeah, that wasn't us. Yeah, like. <laughs> It's just backfiring. I gave it a little more throttle, like, what the fuck? Just, and like, oh. uh, it's having trouble finding the BCM. The vehicle is not supported by the BCM scanner. We found a spark plug that was kind of dangly, which is, you know, probably our bed, most likely. And then we found a blown fuse in there, replaced the fuse with a different fuse, stole it from somewhere else, and now it starts and the fuel pumps work, and I could probably talk to it with the computer, but we're gonna go verify that. No bad times. <laughs> I like that. Good, uh, good vibes only. I like that, Grumpy. <laughs> Dude. Back to uh, not running again. It just looks like there's a loose connection somewhere. Yeah, there's a loose nut behind the wheel. So we're running around, probing connectors, checking for power, because we have one fuse that keeps tripping after a little bit after we drive. Um, check the fuel injectors, check the O2 sensors, check the coil packs, check the two-step. All that stuff had power. Check the alternator. Um, and the field wire on the alternator didn't have power, so we unplugged it, left it unplugged. 
grabbed a spare fuse, jammed it in, powered it back up, PCM booted up. So it's at least on the same shared circuit as that alternator wire, if it isn't the alternator wire. We're running out of fuses. So we gotta decide if we're gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of research on the old internet machine um, and get a diagram and see if there's anything that's supposed to be shared with it. Yeah. So it's likely that it's uh, the alternator that's bad. And well, potentially. We're yeah. gonna find out in a minute. I shouldn't have washed yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, potentially. You shouldn't have washed it. You washed it the hose. Should have just filled it up like the normal person. Instead, I was like, ah. So we're just gonna try to leave the alternator unplugged because there's a small chance that the alternator itself is bad. And that's what's After, after we washed it. After we washed it, yeah. <laughs> after we, by we, I mean Jeremy, the guy with the mullet. Hasn't died yet. But we're about to need headlights. We don't have jumper cables, so we can only get so far if the alternator dies. Where we kind of proven that it hasn't died yet. So we pulled this alternator up, and we've swapped in a new pulse width modulated alternator that we don't have any of the wiring for, but it should limp us somewhere. Did some murder on it. Crikey! Very, very rare to find a specimen like this in an area Dude. like that. Just ran, we checked it with the multimeter, makes 13.5 volts. So we shouldn't have any more problems from here on out. Literally, nothing, nothing could, could go wrong. <laughs> this is living. This is definitely living. This is it. This is Texas. On the road again, like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. Well, we're driving along and all of a sudden it decides it wants to go this way every time you get on the gas. Big and left, guys. Big left. Yeah. And now uh, we come back here and we look for things that cause us to go left and we present smoking axle shaft. That's a problem, as they say in the industry. All right. So here we are in the parking lot of the hotel. We get straight water in here. So we're just going to start pulling this water pump off because even after uh, we went through all the effort of taking the thermostat out and refilling it. Um, it's still kind of just building heat in a upward trending slope without being able to really come down. So we're going to swap the water pump, see if that fixes the issue, and hopefully we're good to go. Flushing the system out, making sure it's got fresh, fresh water, not that desert sand water. And uh, use the steam board to get all the air out of it. And we got our fancy new gauge installed, which it's not going to be lit up, so that's going to suck. But You know, it's like an old race car where it's out the windshield, but instead you have to look backwards to read it. Comes down through the intake, down. And this was in a C10 previously with old gauges, so we actually, had, the head was already tapped for half MPT. Uh, well, now that we know that the, yeah, uh, we've already that the uh, part of the drive shaft whipped around and smoked everything on the tr transmission, we definitely know what it is. So <laughs> We are at ESR in Hobbs, New Mexico. This dude's gonna let us use some of his space and a jack, and we just gotta help him push this not running Nova out so that we can bring Stomper in. Cool, so we're gonna put the front shocks and spring set up on the rear, take these rear shocks out, and put one of these heavier sets of springs on these shocks and then bolt them into the front. And I believe that's gonna lift the ride height of the rear and the front to be roughly level and stop killing CVs. I don't know what these springs are out of, but they're not flat. Like a spring that will go in a coil over. So I need to heat this up, bend it flat like the ones in that wash bucket. Those are just down there. So it'll sit square on the spring seat. Perfect. You happy with it? Yep. Look at this neat trick we've learned. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Why is it longer now? I don't know. Are they all the same length? They should be. You sure? Yeah. Okay, well. So we got this cool water temp gauge that is officially in the back all hot routed up and i realized we're not gonna be able to read it at night because you know it's dark and we're gonna drive through the night for sure so i rigged up this beautiful wire and i ran it down and up through the cab and back through the headlights and now we're gonna tie it into the parking lights so we can see the gauge at night and know when we're overheating 
and ignore it. And cut that. That was actually not bad. Oh yeah. Those rear shafts look pretty much level. The fronts? The front came up when the back went down. In 400 miles, we're gonna know. Front yeah. shafts. Front nice. shafts are still a little uphill, but that's that looks mint. Yeah, it's certainly good for the highway. Yep. Can we like take a wager on what's gonna break next? No. Ah. Literally nothing no, is no gonna moment. go wrong. We have no moment. Not at all. We have nothing to wager. There's nothing left to do. Birth certificates? Social security cards? We'll race, we'll put birth certificates on it. Oh, your oh, passports geez. are pretty valuable. Yeah, I got one. Mine's take expired. It. Check this out. This man's awesome. Mark got us all pizza so we don't starve to death. And like you had a room for us so you could use your tools and you, and you grabbed us pizza. Like, you know, we appreciate it. Wow. I've been there. We're all in the same club for sure. But definitely, definitely. So then definitely car guys, you know, like I said, you gotta, you gotta help each other out. So yeah. hey, make Mark. happen. No problem. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Is it boil over? 240, still. It actually went down after those three yeah. poles. Yeah, like what is this? Debauchery. We get out there, we do four third gear poles wide open, and it goes down to 230. <laughs> Interesting. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna find a hardware store. We're gonna buy a rectangular trash barrel. We're gonna cut the bottom off and we're gonna wedge it in the front of this thing. Like a big old hood scoop. This but is the door. Just like the Corvette air dams. How is it different than what it has? Because right now, all we're doing is accelerating the air up the radiator, yeah. but the radiator's laid back like this, and the coolers are on front of it, so I'm wondering if it isn't skipping over the gotcha. radiator and jamming up the top. So if we get a rectangular trash barrel, and we cut it at the angle of the radiator, you create a, pre a pressure differential between the two sides, it might cool better. But like, I don't know, we're just going what, 70, 80? Yeah, almost like, almost 80 miles an hour right, flat out. Right, and it just temperature drops, just okay, immediate. Okay, maybe we gotta do 80. I mean, fuel mileage won't be that great, but <laughs> get her up. we got miles to make up. Since this cooling package is not very efficient, Texas. it seems like all the air wants to escape out the side instead of going through the radiator. Mm -hmm. Let's stop at our local track supply and sacrifice a nice trash barrel to uh, Sick. That's how it should have came from the factory. Big facts right there, my man. It's... We're just gonna need to seal up all this big open mess of space. should have drove the whole trip. He's scared. This thing corners so well. Yeah. We were we were, did most of that at like 70. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it we just... had to pull over swap driver and put a race car driver in there to catch you.
We're in White Sands, New Mexico. We're like driving through the desert and all of a sudden it opens up into this like, everything's pure white, just like a beach and dunes for miles. That white truck was definitely a park ranger. And yeah. when he saw that and that walk in here, it literally was like started <laughs> yeah. going yeah. towards us. No, I looked at I it. Was, he I, knows. Thought you, I hope you saw it. I was like, no, 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 don't do it. Don't like, do it. Don't whip He's in the water. <laughs> we built a thing. Yeah. This has been an extremely difficult road trip. We wanted to make it to this place on day one. This is now the end of day three. So we really earned it. And uh, it's pure magic, man. This is the quintessential American road trip. The great American mini truck trip. So beautiful. Oh, we suck at cutting, but... Yeah. We will be protected from the desert sun. Look at this. Would you just look at it? Beautiful. The cracks really helped get my air out. <laughs> yeah, who would have thunk? We're gonna head over to the scales. What do you think this way is? 5,200. 48. I'm gonna say 62. I'm gonna guess 49. 50. Kidding. What? I don't know. Can't wait 50? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do you think Stomper's gonna weigh? I think at 35. I was gonna say 35. Three. I think Stomper weighs 31. I can't ask you what you think it weighs because yeah, you're no, I know. Okay, yeah. so we'll do this one first. Just to start, front axle weight was 2,000 pounds. So what do you think it is total? On, on the Vic? On the Vic, yeah. What do you think? I said 49, but that sounds high now. 48 on the nose. Yeah! Wow! wow. 2,000 in the front, 2,800 in the rear. You're telling me I built this whole car and it only weighs 200 pounds more than stock? Yeah. Wait. That's impossible. 38? 48. 48. Okay, 48 total. Yeah, 48 total. So 2,000, 2,800. Okay. Yeah, and so. it's full of road trips. And yeah. honestly, I don't. I, this one surprises shit to me. I can't look. What do you think that one weighs? Front axle. Front axle weight of that is 2,500. Wow. 2,580. I said. I think I said 31. Yeah. But what you said? I said 35. 46. Oh my god. Dude, no way. <laughs> yeah. That little thing weighs. Like I didn't believe it either. But. Wow, Stomper weighs almost 46. We built a hell of a child. Yeah, no sh we birthed that. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing you made the cage out of two inch. Oh my God. That's gnarly. Oh, that's insane how heavy that is. No, it makes me feel way better about my truck. Yeah. And the El Camino. Yeah, yeah, the El Camino is 56. <laughs> right. Wow. Dang. <laughs> Where did it all go? Sick. That's going to be a catastrophic failure if we hit something. destination and Johnny's LTD just took a dump stop charging we don't know if it's the wire to the alternator or if it's the alternator itself but we just drove it here by the time we got to this gas station it was like seven and a half volts so um, it's done so a little diagnosing and then uh, we'll figure out what to do from there but it's never over until it's actually over final diagnosis is that the alternator took a dump the wiring's fine, the resistor's fine, and being that we're an hour away, he, we're just gonna run to his place, grab the trailer, load it up. That's it uh, for this adventure with this car. Well, we are in the middle of damn nowhere and trying to go get a trailer to grab the other car. And, uh, well, uh, We've been around for 
down with this for three hours now. We haven't even got, got anything done. <laughs> no. What have we learned? <laughs> <laughs> that this sucks. <laughs> Always stop for gas. Yeah, always stop for gas. Even if it is 8.46 a gallon. <laughs> we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Thank God for Bailey. But taking these sides off for better cooling sucks. Having no gas jug sucks. Just put gauges in your stuff. That's all you need to know. Just gauges and everything makes the world go around. Thanks for coming to my tech talk. made it to the mythical oasis in the California desert called Laser Town. Cody convinced me to give him this truck, so now it's his. Yeah, I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we traded a little bit. A little, little trade. <laughs> but it is badass. We just lowered the uh, pressure down to 15 pounds, and this this stomp, Stomper, is, which we're going to keep the name Stomper, is going to fit right into Laser Town. It's this, the, like Laser Town, the way I've been describing it to my friends, I'm like, everything that's awesome but doesn't really make sense is in, is in Laser Town. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's all about freedom and be able to do what you want and have some fun. And if it, you know, it, it, Stomper belongs to Laser Town. You're going to be everything a good dad. Everything about it. It's going to be, it's going to be good. You're going to be a good dad to Stomper. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for making the trek.